Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to start the second order methods and we're going to start with Newton's method which is the simplest of second order methods. And the idea behind this is that if is that I do, um, I just take, so remember with the gradient descent we Taylor expanded um, to first order, now we're just going to Taylor expand to second order. and then truncate here. We're not gonna go to three, three order, so it's, um, well, this is exact equality. Oh, I'll put approximately and then just cross this term out, right? We drop that term. And so the idea here is we want to minimize this expression. Noting, uh, so the Hessian is just uh, d squared f of x, which is in Einstein notation, f i j e i tensor product e j. And then if you don't know Einstein notation, it's, it's just this matrix. Where f maps from r n to r. M. In our case, M is one for, for what we'll be talking about mostly is scalar function, but in general, that's what the Hessian looks like. Um, so the idea behind this is we minimize that expression. So let's do that. So we wanna take the derivative with respect to the perturbation, right? We're finding the step <clears throat> and <clears throat> you can do this calculation and you end up getting <clears throat> the gradient of f of x plus oh sorry this is div this is one half here um, plus the hessian acting on h is zero after just through, that's just a calculation. I won't spend too much time on it here. Um, and so H is, uh, or yeah, DDH, but you do this component wise. Uh, so H is uh, the Hessian inverse times the gradient at F. Oh, minus, minus this. And so, uh, the, so important points. It is not guaranteed to get a descent direction. So the idea behind this is that we don't necessarily get a descent direction. I'll move over here. Is when the quadratic approximation isn't accurate up to the size of h is minus. Right, so the point is that this quadratic could be very shallow and throw you into something, into a totally different part of the domain. And so uh, it's not accurate up to the scale of what its, what its minimum is. And so this is a, this is a major issue that, that will come up. I just wanna motivate it here. And basically Newton's method is not what you wanna do. You wanna do something like a quasi-Newton method or, or um, uh, Newton Krylov. The second point that I want to point out here is that it is fast when the approximation is good. Um, and I'll, I'll motivate that. I'll just motivate that with an example here. 
So let's say we actually have a quadratic, right? And the approximation is perfect. And I give you a terrible guess here of x naught equals 10 to the 10th. We obviously know that there's a unique global minimum. It's the only local minimum. It's a unique global minimum here at x squared. And so with gradient descent, if I choose 10 to the 10th, we have to do a, an Armijo condition thing and we pretend we don't know this a priori then we have to choose step lengths and it might take 100 iterations. We'll get there, but it might take us 100 iterations. But the idea here is that if we just plug in these equations, and we know this is quadratic, right? So it should, it'll actually converge in one iteration. So the idea here is that the, the gradient of f at this point is 2 times 10 to the 10th, so it's a massive gradient. And uh, the Hessians 2, that's our formula. And so we get um, 10 to the 10th, our new step length is 10 to the 10th minus uh, the inverse Hessian times the gradient. So that's, so this part is h of x inverse and this term here, 2 times 10 to the 10th, that's the gradient of f of x naught, and this is 0. So it converges in one iteration. So that's the main takeaway, is that it can be faster um, than gradient descent in certain in, in the case where the quadratic is, is a good approximation. So the main thing there is that when you're close to the minimum, that quadratic will approximate it well. And so in general, when you're close to the minimum, you want Newton's method. When you're far away, you want gradient descent because Newton will be could be way off. And here's an example where Newton will be way off. So let's take first this purple point here. And if we did a quadratic expansion, so right, its slope is close to zero and its curvature is close to zero. So this quadratic, it's a slightly positive curvature here. This quadratic is gonna look something like this. It's gonna be very shallow. <clears throat> and I'm exaggerating here, so pardon me if this is not too accurate. In fact, it's slanted, so now the point is this is the example that I want. Maybe I could have drawn a, a better example, but the whole point here is that when this is a shallow, when the curvature is small, or, yeah, what am I doing? That's not, that's super quadratic. This will be you know, it's super shallow. We need that to be smoother. So it looks more like that. And again, it's slanted, but <clears throat> the point here is that the minimum is going to be over here. And so you overshoot, you bypass all of this behavior, right? All of that behavior where it actually dips down a lot is completely lost because this, this curvature is so shallow. And similarly here with uh, this blue one, the curvature is actually negative. And so this is actually very important, right? Because remember, all we're doing is we're minimizing this quadratic expression as a function of the step. That's probably shallower than that. It's not too important. The point is, the point is that the curvature is negative here. So let's say that's what it looks like. It's harder to visualize than the tangent. The tangent's super easy to visualize. But the point is, that's the quadratic now. Okay. And so uh, this can't be minimized per se, but we still have the um, this expression that it's the negative uh, Hessian inverse. And let's say that I drew this slightly better, that the tangent here is actually positive. So we end up having this for the blue case. So the point is this quadratic actually can't be minimized, right? So if I take f of, f of xn minus Hessian inverse at x naught, gradient f of x or n, 
f of xn. So the gradient is positive. This will be negative. And so we're actually going to step in that direction. And so the whole, it's very important. So another big takeaway, we want h of x to be positive definite. So really what we're doing here is we're actually, this is actually corresponding to a maximum, right? We're maximizing the local quadratic because remember all we did was we, we set the derivative to zero, but that doesn't guarantee that it's a minimum. So in this case, when it's negative curvature, it's, it's actually local maximum. And so what we really want is, is, is this. And h of x being positive definite is when we can't guarantee this positive definite approximation to um, h of x is um, is the basis of a class of well Uh, basis of really quasi-Newton methods in general. And that's what we'll get into in the next video. We'll cover uh, quasi-Newton, um, Newton-Krylov, um, all, these, all these other methods that, that help solve these issues um, with Newton's method. And thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the